TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on the post notification bells, and let's continue to go to family from Chicago to the UK. I have recorded another video, but it got blocked. I was gonna go to sleep after I was done with that video, and that was the last one, but I, well, I'm awake still, giving y'all another video. Cause I can't go on a Friday with no video, man, so you know, traffic cops it is. Uh, don't forget we are partnered with the Blueprint Mastermind. This link is down below. Any old videos are here. And uh, read this, man, it's important. Because I don't want to get in no trouble. Let's get into it. This is season 12, episode 1. He has got assault police in our cab. Vehicles stopped. Get out! Get out! Give me your hands! Hold the fuck! I'm trapped. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. Makes me angry. Get your s**t! Get out! In England. Yorkshire. It's God's country, isn't it? Let's be fair. We're working in a rural force compared to working in a, a metropolitan force. Your roads are much quicker in a rural force, aren't they? Because there's yeah. a lot more national. More bigger accidents because you've yeah. got 60 instead of crawling bumps, haven't you? Yeah. On the western borders of North Yorkshire, traffic cop Sergeant Paul Crabtree and Ben Prosser wait are three hours into a day shift. It's not a national park for no reason, is it? It's a bit of a privilege, really. But as well, there's some responsibility with that. Can't just have anybody coming through and no, that's using soon. the roads. Like it's a vinful shift. Like the, the race tracks. Five, six, go ahead. Force control, your. News comes in that a young driver is suspected of taking his dad's car without consent. It's on the hot list as well if we get any sightings. He's failed to stop for police and is wanted. You just have a look at the suspect. Yeah, stand by him. His previous source from the vendor. Reported to be under the influence of cannabis, the young... Shout out to the first responders, man. And now y'all in here hitting that like button and pushing, pushing it, pushing it. Appreciate y'all. Man has been taken into police custody before. Allegedly, he failed to stop for the police another time and is suspected of running away from a vehicle after it was set on fire, though he was not charged or convicted. That's lovely. You got myself in 1214 in Oscar Romeo 56. It's a great seat at Volvo S. Police cameras pinpoint the car being driven through the dales. Towards we'll start making his way up that way. Hey, thank you. There's certain triggers as a traffic cop that you listen to and you think, oh no. This is not the same as um, uh, police enforcers. I just want to let somebody, let all of y'all know that this is not the same. There is no narrator. All I hear is people. Wait, did I hear a narrator on my tweet? Are being driven through the dales. Okay, I oh, guess. You listen to and you think, it's oh, not the same narrator. No. That heightens the risk, and we know this person may well be intoxicated under the influence of drugs. It heightens the risk to the public, and it heightens the risk to himself. Can you confirm for me, ASAP, has Dad had any contact with son? Negative, no contact with son. The search continues, and there are now three police units hunting for it. Given these previous and the size of the car, I'd suggest that we go for a box with a stinger. With that, we've got the added, added elements of the potential truck driving. We're going up the back route, the Dales, which I think the way is taken, and there are the Zulu Papa units going up, so I think they'll be sufficient for it. Yeah, we There's a lot more finesse with the UK police. A lot more finesse going on instead of brutality, like brute force, is what I'm saying. We've got firearms units looking for the vehicle. I like the finesse. There it's gone. Yeah, sighting. Bye-bye. 
We still got anybody coming in from the other end. You've got 12 stops. What's your monitor? Gonna give him some room, mate. Yeah. We're just maintaining a bit of a gap. Um, it's possible that he's not realised that he's wearing another marked car. That's Speed's currently 80 miles an hour. With how he's driving and the state that he's in, he's a danger. He's a danger to himself. He's a danger to other road users. Whoa. He's almost just gone head on into an oncoming vehicle on a blind brow. Other car's doing 60 miles an hour and he's doing 70, 80. That's a combined crash at head on at 130 miles an hour. Nobody's thriving. That's going to end someone's life. Yeah, we're going to need one ahead of us uh, heading towards... Uh... Not going to lie, this might be a little lit. <laughs> As Ben and Paul prepare to puncture the suspect's tyres. Romeo 5-6, just rid us, we've got a stinger, stinger pop. More backup is nearby. Jog or spot? Yeah. What you want to do is ambush the vehicle. You don't want that vehicle to know that you're going to throw a stinger out in front of it. You want the person to drive over it. Yeah. Quite a strong smell of cannabis coming from the vehicle. Almost lost it on the bends. Uh... Is there any vehicles in front of the subject vehicle? Yeah, XC90 Black. I am anticipating he's probably going to go for an overtake on that one, though. The third police car is racing to help bring the vehicle to a stop. Just tell Foxy when he comes up behind us just to yeah. chill out with his lights, man, for us. I think he's slowed right down now. He's obviously not aware of our presence. So we should confirm on course for the thing aside then. Yeah. Set heading towards you south. It's an intense feeling because you're waiting for the inevitable. It's coming round that corner. I'm as a spotter thinking, please don't lose control and don't come through this wall that I'm hiding behind. But Paul's be vulnerable. He's in the middle of a road with a stinger and a car coming towards him that, that don't want to stop. And he's gone for the overtake. Stinger sight into the 30s now, did he monitor it? Stinger sight is confirmed. Joel Foyne, we're just outside. Through a red light on the traffic lights. Yeah. When you hear that, it's a relief. So now that vehicle's been stung, yeah, what we want to do is... You know where he's going? He's going to jail. <laughs> completely surround that vehicle and bring it to a stop. It's over with. Yeah, I've got a front near side deflation uh, slowing down 30 mile an hour. A bright blue jacket on. An RC bright blue. Ollie? Bright blue. Well, it's going to go on a minute, mate. Yeah, I can see both front tyres deflated. Uh, it's going to be long tyres, I think. It's not bad. Yeah, it's on his rooms. 1 8 from 1 0. I'm thinking about getting past him. What do you think? Yeah, just uh, I'm thinking the same. Let's just get this wagon past us on the side and then we'll get past him. Yeah. Yeah, you go front, I'll go rear. Yeah, I think he's lost both front tyres now, so... With Ben and Paul playing catch-up. So I'm happy for the box. Yeah, that's received. Yeah, we're going to have to go for it, mate. The lead car moves ahead of the suspect. While Colin... That's a nice car to be doing little manoeuvres in. And getting dinged up. He's close in from behind. He's out! Coming up. Please continue that! It's a lot here. Who's here, Reynolds? Smell of cannabis. Ooh. In North Yorkshire. Yeah, we're going to have to go for it, mate. After an hour-long search for a suspected stolen car. He's out! Please continue that! A young man is on the run in the Yorkshire Dales. That boy fast. <laughs> He got the blue jacket on, I ain't even see it no more. He gone like the wind. Ugh. It's lost, lost from my view, lost, lost. I think if we dog just... Unit, dog units here. Oh yeah, it's over, buddy. 
I think that's our best option. Traffic cops Ben Prosser Waite and Sergeant Paul Crabtree are among the officers hunting him down. There's the road with the van on it, there's the river there, which we've got covered. Don't Father Ted live over here somewhere? He probably went. <laughs> Ain't that the brick wall from Father Ted? All right. But in between, and he appears to be somewhere in this, this straight of land here towards that plantation. So it's a case That's of waiting now. Along with the dog unit, five firearms officers are searching. He was wearing a boat, however, he seems to have uh, discarded of his clothing. Fella, get your cell phone now! Step out! Step out, Taser! Step out of the bin! I think they found him. I think we found him. How's it behind your back? I'll get the close one. Thank you. All right, fella, listen to me. You're currently going to be under arrest and suspicion of stealing a motor vehicle, dangerous driving, and failed to stop the police, okay? Listen, I think you've got the wrong guys. There's four lads running through here. One guy in a big blue jacket. All right. That wasn't you, was it? All yeah. oh, right. And now you grab me. Wait, oh, I was in there meditating. Well, can you please take my bag? I haven't got nothing on me, man. I've already told you everything I got. There's weed in the bag, that's it. I smoke weed, that's, everything. that's all you got. I seen four guys run through here. One dude in a big blue jacket. Not me. When has that ever worked? Yeah, good job, mate. Come on, keep walking, buddy. Is that the car? Woo! Can I have some water? Come on, get off me. Get off me. Get off me. Get off me. Come on. Let me just get in myself. Let me 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 get in myself. Listen to me. Come on, you can touch me. Just chill out a bit. Just relax it a bit. I don't need a position. I'm not going to resist. No, I'm resisting with you. Because you're. I ain't resisting with this guy once. Stop twisting my arm. Trust me, mate. Wait till it gets the lizards on you. What's your name? What's your name? I'm asking you a direct question. Who's in charge of this? Who's in charge? Who's the leader? Who's in charge? Live and direct. I said, who's in charge? Yo. Who do you think he is? Grinder? Bro got the rapping, he got the MCing. Who's in charge? I am then. Just the Thank you. Alright. That's all it took. How are you? That's all it took. Uh, uh, okay. Yo. In his bag where he was hiding, there was um, several of these packets here. Uh, and inside was a quantity of green herbal matter that we believe to be cannabis. There's several of them. Two there that are uh, still sealed. It's a similar feeling inside them as well. As well as drugs offences, the young suspect could be facing other charges and time in prison. You need to charge him for rapping. He need a fine. Don't ever do that again. Back in, just talk to him a second while I do this. Just talk to him. I don't know. You're not passing out. I'm in this place, He's going to go down to Harrogate Custody, initially on aggravated taking of the vehicle, the dangerous driving elements of it. He's fit to interview, we'll get that done. One. Front two. It's only done fronts. Even stood here now, there's just the waft of cannabis coming out of it. And then if we find anything else in the car, we'll put everything to him, see what he's got to say, really. It's pleasant, this, isn't it? It you is know, pleasant. Like recovering a stolen vehicle in the Dales. Regarding the Volvo, we're going to go to the... It's kind of stolen, it ain't even really stolen. Recovery yard and search it. The road's challenging enough as it is. For an advanced driver, you've got roads that are narrow, you've got junctions coming out, you've got tractors going up and down the country roads. It only takes one corner to get it wrong, and you're putting yourself at danger or the other person at danger. With more than one and a half thousand 17 to 25 year olds killed or seriously injured each year, young motorists are some of the most at risk, especially when drink and drugs are involved. Outskirts of York. Nine, nine, nine. Yes. Uh, please, please. 
Hi, it's just to report the accident on the ring road. Uh, Mid more. You know what I think that was? Somebody trying to be one of those slick overtakes. Like, oh yeah, I could beat the semi truck. No, you can't. Morning on the York Ring Road. On the Ring Road. It's mid morning on the York Ring Road. He's not gone out. A 19 year old in a Corsa has just smashed head on into a 40 ton lorry. On RTC, Shipton Road area, York bypass between HGD and two cars. I think one person is trapped in one of the cars and the road is blocked. I'm just at Bramham, I can go if you want me to. Nearby, uh, traffic cop Chris Storey is one of the first to respond. So it's been made aware currently uh, occupants trapped in one of the vehicles, so um, we'll just head towards and, um, and see what the situation is in relation to injuries. I always fear the worst is whenever there's somebody involved in a high-speed collision. We're always going to treat it that somebody potentially is going to die. Oscar, I'm one three. Have we established the level of injury yet? He just clicked at the end then, but I got pain in his face. Yes, yes, he comes breathing, speaking just at the moment. There's officers with him at the minute, so we'll obviously explore that when we get there. He is uh, trapped and crushed. He has got passengers. He's completely injured. Ah, that's monitored. Oh. Chris, just keep us updated. I'll start making my way down. He got that lorry good. I'm going to call it what y'all call it. He got that lorry good. Down from blaming. Also making his way to the scene is traffic cop Sergeant Pete Stringer. If we work on the worst case scenario <laughs> and then stamp people down. He'll be investigating the cause of the crash with Chris. And we've got the mark and his recent arrest just in case there's anything further in the car. There's a suggestion just come over the radio about one of the drivers um, possibly linked to drugs and that there might be some drugs in his car. I'm just on 59 now, so uh, is it actually 19 towards the ambulance headquarters? I've got one opportunity only to gather that evidence that will hopefully lead to either a successful prosecution or, if there has been a fatality, to answering questions of grieving families. I understand that one of the drivers or one of the witnesses has a dash cam in his car as well, which we'll obviously be keen to look at. This young lad's obviously taken a massive risk if he is driving after consuming alcohol and drugs and in the manner in... Don't drink and drive, man. It's not fun. Which is allegedly driving. I think it's fun, it ain't. In these circumstances, they'll look at cutting him out. I don't think we've decided where he's going yet, though, have we? Whether he's no, going by no, ambulance so or what, air ambulance. What they'll do is they'll get him out, they'll assess him. Obviously, we do have a concern um, in relation to him being under the influence well, of alcohol or drugs. I, I, I just think cannabis like no yeah, business. Yeah, yeah. So, so we will want a cop with him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We'll, let, we'll let you know. The driver of the course has been seen to by the fire and ambulance service. Hopefully we'll get him out soon. I don't want to blame this on cannabis. I just want to blame this on idiocracy. This is dumb. Let me hear what happened. Fire were cutting the roof off the vehicle to be able to get him out nice and safely. Yeah, he's deteriorated. He's deteriorated. Yeah. Him. Okay, and we can plan once we get him out. With his condition getting worse, time is critical. <sighs> Pete arrives and turns his attention to the HGV. Good morning. Anything you need from me or? I'll come and find you, sir. OK. What's the HGV? With any oh. collision where an HGV is involved, the final outcome isn't good. The two coming head-on together, one being a small hatchback car, one of them being a 44-tonne goods vehicle, makes it a potentially 100-mile-an-hour-plus collision. It's just uh, a scene of utter carnage that's going to take quite a while to clear up. The truck driver has been seen by medics and left the crash site. Things are out of it. Yeah, I'm great, so. The driver did sustain a fractured thumb. 
probably from holding onto the steering wheel, trying to regain control of his vehicle. He must have been going through absolute hell. While the lorry's size protected its driver from serious harm, the Corsa driver's injuries are still being checked. That's it, squeeze them really tight. Got to think first and foremost about um, the driver's welfare. Have we asked for a drug wipe, Chris? Um, no, we've not got that far. If, if yeah. we, yeah, I was just going to let him get assessed, but yeah. if we if we can, we'll get we'll do a saliva and breath test here. My boy's on oxygen. How he gonna breathe in a? You can see the alcohol container in there, but I was looking for drugs. Obviously, there's a what could be mistaken for a dealer bag on the driver's seat, and obviously down in there, I mean, they do look to be empty, in fairness. Although there's a very strong smell of cannabis coming from it. With signs of possible alcohol and drug use, Pete speaks to the passenger. I, uh, just been told that you were a passenger in the vehicle. Been checked over by paramedics? Yep. Feeling all right, apart yeah. from shaking up? Is it your partner, your boyfriend that's driving? Is that the person there? Yeah, well, you... No. No, no family friend or...? No, just a friend. Just a friend. OK, and where have you been this morning? Uh, my friend's house. And oh, where is it? This is like pulling teeth, is this? This is like having a conversation yeah, no, with my yeah, teenager. I was coming back from Acre. And do you know what happened at all? Did you see it, hear it? Yeah. What happened? He just crashed into the lorry. He just crashed into the lorry? Well... Any reason why he crashed into the lorry? Distracted by anything? No. Doing anything you shouldn't have been doing? <laughs> what are you trying to imply right now? I, I, I'm, okay, I'm guessing he's just applying, implying the liquor, but it sounds like something else. That you're aware of? No. Okay. As the young driver is treated, Pete receives an update. Uh, she said he's taking coke. Because mm. uh, he keeps yeah. having episodes of not breathing, which is, I think. Right. Um, okay. Because of drugs. Yeah, yeah. Is he conscious? Can you open your eyes for me? Can you hear me? He's not reacting. Grab the oxygen. Wake up! They're going to take him by on the ambulance to Leeds. Um, have you done the procedure before? In the hospital, we have. With an officer on his way to hospital to arrange a blood test, Chris explores how the driver lost control. We need to... ...was in the ambulance on his D-E-A-T-H bed. <laughs> and um, I mean, I get it, they got to do their job, but then... Publish. ...why is the car so on the wrong side of the road? There could be a number of reasons. Has he gone for an overtake? Has he had a medical episode at the wheel? There's drugs paraphernalia. Me, personally, I think he went for the overtake. And that liquor and that other stuff, the class A, is impeding his depth perception. He's not all there. Found in the car and the vodka bottle. There could be a number of factors as to why he's there. So I'm gonna quick look at the point of impact. We've got markings here, which are kind of straying in this direction, and then a long, what appears to be a tire mark here. As you can see, it's, there is quite a significant um, indentation into the road there, so that the actual point of impact, so we can see that he was obviously on the wrong side of the road. He's obviously just made a bad decision, and that's probably coupled with whatever is in his system, which is yet to be determined. We can look at getting the road back open. You know, it's, it's going to be putting people out of the way, so we'll look at getting it open as soon as we can. The most recent update from the hospital is that the driver's um, in and out of sleep apparently which um, could be to do with a number of things obviously medical or whether uh, he's under the influence of some drugs still and which just kind of shows obviously that he shouldn't have been driving in the first place but we strongly suspect fortunately uh, he definitely shouldn't have been in that driver's seat for sure we've got some dash cam footage we've got a number of witnesses and they've seen his manner of driving and things like that so really helps us to support our investigation Coming up. 
Oscar Sierra 15, just confirm you've got ambulance en route. Across the country, drunk and drugged under 25s are a growing problem. A member of the public has come across a vehicle on its side in the head. I don't even understand, man. I just think young people, because, you know, I'm young. I think at a certain point, I just didn't understand what came with a DUI. It's $10,000 you're spending, at a minimum. And you won't be able to drive, you won't be able to get around. Like, that's not cool. It ain't fun. <laughs> Edge driver seems intoxicated. And it's at night that the traffic cops catch many of these young drivers behind the wheel. Are you buying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, yeah. We get lots of reports from members of the public. We do face an issue with drink and drug drivers who are younger. 19th of the 10th, 22. They think, oh, it's just, it's just a drive home, it's just a drive around the corner. How come you parked there today? If you take a chance like that, you are going to get caught or you're going to kill somebody. Here's that massive owl then. Massive owl on the side of the road, took off. You don't be looking over at fields. It is nice when you're driving around and you say stuff like that. Yeah. PC Mike Rowan is starting a night shift with colleague Carl Barnes. Beal. In the control room, an urgent call comes in. A vehicle's driving up down very fast around the road. The hood up looking. Um, just on route, a member of the public has phoned in to say that uh, there's a car currently outside the house. This is long, I need to get something to I just want to let y'all know I'd really be out here holding it down with the... This, though? Casamigos. <laughs> just driving up and down the road uh, like a maniac. We haven't got any vehicle details at the moment, apart from the silver Ford Fiesta. There's always a bit of an excitement uh, whenever a job like that's gone off. You gotta be like me and... Drink responsibly at home. It's what we joined the job to do, catch people like that. So uh, we don't know whether it's stolen, we don't know if it's a drink driver, uh, so we're not too far away, so uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll find them. Also racing to where the car was last seen, a Sergeant Julian Pearson and PC Matt Harvey. Yeah, I just want some contact for information here, go on. Up ahead, Julian's caught up with the suspect. Also, just in case y'all thought it was a game, another UK snack, Kellogg's Rice Krispie Squares. They do taste different than our version. It's made by the same people. Vehicle. Vehicles all over the road. It's not some of the units, please. Matt's not far behind. Thank you. 
The third unit is also speeding its way towards the suspect car. It is all over the road. You might expect somebody in that state just be walking out your local pub at three o'clock on a Friday night, uh, not in a car driving through Hamilton Village. It is leaving both sides of the carriageway. We have to get this vehicle stopped right now because if it continues, it's going to crash. It should hopefully work out because there's two traffic units, like self included, en route from this side of the village, and uh, there's another unit heading in from the opposite side. It's committed, committed back. I just heard something very interesting. Why? Hold on. En route from this side of the village. This side of the village is crazy. I'm thinking he gonna say city. He said village. I was taking it. I almost choked on this rice cooker. I ain't never ever heard that. And uh, there's another unit heading in from the opposite side. It's committed, committed back towards Monk Fryston. I'm going out with Stinger Sarge. Yeah, that's received. <laughs> Police interceptor's favorite move is the T pack. Traffic cops is the Stinger. It's the difference, y'all. As Julian continues the pursuit, Mike and Matt prepare their stingers. A60. Mike and Matt, what is it? Two for two for one sting operation. Three just outside of Monk Fryston. Yes, mate. This is us. I got all the UK snacks. Don't play with me. This serious over here. You feel me? Despite a successful sting, Julian still needs backup. Yes, yes, we are on route to you. Just pull over to the other side, just pull it in front of the box. Good Kate. Yeah, there you go, much time, going in the way. How old are you, mate? Yeah, there you go, much time, going in the way. Is he from Liverpool? How old are you, mate? Uh, 21. Uh, have you had a drink? Oh, I, can, I can smell drink on you. No, I haven't. Right, because he, listen to I'm me. Under limit. Because of the manner of your driving and because yeah. I can smell alcohol on your breath, I'm going to require yeah. you to provide me, provide me with a specimen of breath. All right. One continuous breath until I tell you to stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. He immediately struck me as being drunk. You could smell it. It was such a strong smell of alcohol in the air which is all the more concerning, considering who's behind the wheel of a car. So you failed the roadside breath test. Obviously. So you've blown 77 at the roadside, the legal limit is 35. <clears throat> and you said you was under. You double, my boy. So at this point you are uh, arrested yeah, for driving a motor vehicle while o over the prescribed limit. Mate, keep your hands where I can see them. The keys are on the dashboard there. So I'll, so, yeah, so I'll take care of them in a second. Isn't he handcuffed? What are you doing? You can't smoke either, mate. Got an update for you. The suspect does have previous. He was arrested for drug driving two days ago. Right, mate. Two days ago? You didn't learn your lesson from two days ago? He got to be got some got to be going on in him in his life though, where he's trying to escape. They need to figure out what's at the root of the problem. Uh, you know, jail's probably not gonna fix it. He needs some counselling. He's clearly trying to drown himself in liquor and get away from something. You're going to uh, pop you in the back of here, yeah? yeah. And you're going to get taken to York. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you hear news that he's done it twice in a week, it makes me angry because this isn't just one offence. This isn't just a thing, oh, I, I just 
I've had a bit to drink and I'm, I'm just going to go out for a drive. He's had, had a tough day or something like that. He's done it twice in a week. This is... So, Officer PC, whatever, that should that should say something. It, I mean, no, nevertheless, he is completely in the wrong. But at the same time, it's like, he's not just having a tough day. He could be having a tough month, a tough life, a tough go at period. He needs counseling, an AA meeting. Becoming a habit which needs to be stopped. How many times have I got? Let's have a look. I think two, Both three. this side. I think you three. three. Three out of yeah. four. <laughs> Just going through there, mate. Yeah. In custody, Matt Harvey and traffic cop Pete Allison prepare the driver for further tests. All right, this way, my friend. Have you have yourself a seat there. Sweet two. Sit, sit yourself down. I warn you that failure to provide either of these specimens will render you liable to prosecution. Do you agree to provide two specimens of breath for analysis? Liable to prosecution of what? If, if you don't, if you don't provide a specimen of breath, you're liable to prosecution for fail to provide. Yeah, sweet, I'll do it. Right, so when you're ready, I'll hold that tube. Yeah. yeah. So remember, one big lung of, fill your lungs full of air, and then one continuous breath until I tell you to stop. Keep going, keep going. That's it, mate. Fantastic. Stop there. Right, if I can just show you these then. So it's taken two breath tests from you. Um, the first one is 75, and the second one is 73. So that confirms you are over the limit. Having blown twice the legal limit, the man faces his second charge of the week. Go on, in you, in you go, man. So the plan from here is get your head down if you wish. You're going to be with us for the night and in the morning, yeah? By the time that alcohol needs to leave your system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's probably going to be the morning. Okay. How are you doing? You all right? In the police waiting area. Um, I'm just see if I can get access to this room, and then we'll go through there and have a chat with you. The 19-year-old driver involved in the serious crash with the HGV is waiting to have a voluntary interview. Involved in. I have these shoes. The serious I'm, I'm, crash. I'm a little bigger of a guy, so they're uncomfortable. Crash with the HGV is waiting to have a voluntary interview. To prepare, Chris Story reviews witness dashcam footage. Dashcam footage is obviously just absolute gold as for us. It's, it's brilliant. It's what we want to see. So the footage shows the heavy goods vehicle driving on the right side of the road, not doing anything wrong, driving along at quite a steady speed. And then all of a sudden you see the collision with the car, so as it kind of spins out down the road and the goods vehicle, it kind of takes a sudden turn to the near side, travels into the field. So it shows us that the, the heavy goods vehicles on the right side of the road is not doing anything wrong. The Corsa is on the wrong side of the road. So we just want to basically see what his account's going to be. Yeah, let's hear this. That's it, grab a seat that side for me. Perfect. Do you want to tell me what happened? And why is that that you can't remember? All oh, right, okay. The suspect denies taking any drugs or consuming any alcohol prior to the collision. I mean, at this point, you know, he'd been to the hospital. Nobody took blood, so he could say what he want, right? He's not really giving an account other than saying that um, he can't remember it, really. Just completely blanking the idea of him knowing anything about the collision happened, uh, why he was on that side of the roads. While Chris waits for the results of the blood tests, the young man is free to get back on the road. Well, what road? I would like to think that within the space of two weeks, being arrested and also being involved in a serious road traffic collision would be more than enough to give anybody the absolute wake-up call. This is time for serious change, isn't it? He's certainly young enough to make changes now, so I hope that going forward he does. Coming up... It's pub closing time. Sergeant Rich Harrison and traffic cop Mark Davey 
are on the lookout for young, drunk or drugged drivers. Keep accelerating to the red light, mate. Good idea. Oh, light's red. The new generation see it socially acceptable to drug drive. They don't think that there's anything wrong with having a couple of joints and getting in the car. Drug driving is as dangerous as drink driving. Hello, New York. Yes, sir. I would need to see some scientific proof, some case studies to back that type of accusation, even though I'm not a smoker. I almost said I'm not a drinker, but <laughs> I'm not a smoker, and I would definitely not drink and drive. I mean, I mean, drive and smoke, and I, I would not drink and drive either. But I would need to see some like scientific. I need, I need proof. Yes. Me personally. Yeah. Gotta remember, I'm coming from somewhere where it's legal to do these things and that things of that nature. Coming up. Yes, yes. There's a, uh, a truck driver with lots of failure in Scarborough. He's been released from custody. He's now travelling back to West Yorkshire. Go ahead. Silver 5 Series. Yeah, it's a four. It's him again? He's apparently uninsured as well. Yeah, received. Rich, we're just ahead here, Craig and I. Do you want to plot up somewhere? Yes, yes, we'll shout you up when we're ready to shoot. 10-4. Nearby, traffic cop Mark Patterson is providing backup. We've not got somebody that's trying to just drug drive under the radar. We've got somebody that's been told not to get back into his vehicle and has just completely ignored that information. Freaking like they're not on your bumper, bro. They told you not to get it and now they're going to watch and see if you do it. That's it. That's it. I think vehicles pass us opposite direction. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, contact, contact with subject vehicle. Committed, committed, westbound. Unable to tell how many occupants are inside the vehicle. Uh, speed six zero. The second police car is now right behind Rich and Mark. Is his lights on? Yeah, his lights are definitely on. The police lights. Clear side indication, standby. Jump out, step over it for us. You know what's coming in. Yeah, I do, I do. Lovely. Stand up here then to sort out the flow of traffic. I'm just going to reverse car back. Just walk down towards yeah, yeah, this yeah. So, go on, talk me through what's happened tonight then. So, basically, me and girlfriend come out for a drive. Um, I had a smoke at about 7 o'clock after work. Tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what we talked, 7 o'clock, we're talking 8 hours ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I drove here, like I say, got pretty much to start the bike roundabout on the front. Uh, one of your colleagues got behind me, followed me all the way along. I pulled up, obviously we're going to roll the fag, go for a little walk with girlfriend. Um, obviously, the vast of anything in the car, I admit to having a grinder. Uh, I searched the car, obviously they put a car to that with no insurance, which I'm generally shocked about. So, you've not been paying your insurance for three months? Yeah, pr yeah, pretty much. Right. So why are you genuinely shocked about it then? <laughs> if you know you ain't paid it in three months, why is it shocking that you don't have it anymore? So, do you believe, so I believe, probably you believe you're not insured yeah. then? Oh no, that, that's pending, yeah, but I've insured the car now off of cover just to get it home. Right. I, I found out that I'm not insured when I've got there. So it is covered now. I've got the email to get me home. We'll deal with that after. I, I, I suspect done. you're still kind of missing your system. Yeah. Was it one of these you did before or was it a big machine? No, no it was a machine at station. Right. Same on your right cheek. I've got a jacket on back to your car, there's a chance to grab it. The, it's just a, it's a blue one, mate. So when you were released from custody tonight, yeah, yeah. what was your advice? Uh, basically, advice recommended not to drive. The chap behind the counter who booked me in, he, he said I'm still able to drive, but obviously... Say again, you still what? Still able to drive. So you've been, so you've been told tonight, when you've left custody, that you're still okay to drive? Yeah, but they recommended not to, purely because obviously the cannabis. You're going to probably fail this, you know that, don't you? I really hope not. Um, so, I mean, the information that we've got is that you've been, you, you said that someone was coming to collect you. No one was going to try and arrange someone to come collect us. What I'm trying to say is, 
two sides to every story. Yeah. I'm assuming the police officers at Scarborough believe that you've got someone to come and collect you. Well, no, they let us walk out of the hut. Um, yeah, they would have let you walk out because of... told them we're going to go to a hotel. So you haven't? No, no, no. Right, so they think you've gone to a hotel, do they? Yes. Right, now we're getting somewhere, I think. Because yeah, that, no, that no, one... I'll be honest, mate. Well, we, we honest, weren't quite there a minute ago. A minute ago, you got told to go get in your car and drive home. Having driven 90 miles to Scarborough uninsured, it's suspected the driver was trying to get home before his two-hour insurance runs out. Well, as we suspected, you're positive again. Oh, are you kidding? Okay. Really? Yeah. I'll be honest, I've like, so, but... As a result of that, no one less especially good driving. That's what's going to happen is we're going to go to York custody this time. Right, cause obviously, all I'm thinking about now, that car's obviously going to be not insured in a couple of hours, isn't it? It's going to be left on the road. But you're not having the keys this time. No, no, no. We're having the keys. That's fine, that's fine. You're a risk. You'll be staying in as long as we can keep you in. <laughs> I had a joint eight hours ago. And they, I don't know if I believe, or they probably don't believe that he hasn't done any more since he got out. But, like, obviously you're still going to, you know what I'm saying? Because it stays on you for X amount. Whatever. I'm not a smoker. I don't care. Once again, the young man will undergo a further drug test at the station. Two in one night is crazy, though. Is this a police officer with a Rolex on? I'm baffled. Don't drink drive twice in the same day. No, I thought That's after big... a few hours, mate, I'll be honest, I thought... Yeah, but they've advised you. They'll have, they'll have said to you when you leave. They'll have said, no, don't, don't get back in your car. What have you done? Oh, All right, okay. Okay. right. Unbelievable, isn't it? And he probably thought that he could chance his arm. You know, he probably thought, oh, you know, no one will notice, but we have noticed. Try hards, that's why. I mean, hey, you doing your job to the best of your ability, man. He, he just got caught. Try hards or not, that's what y'all supposed to do. The lads that smoke it day in, day out, when you speak to them, you know, they've got mental health problems or depression and then they use cannabis to cope with them issues. Or they just, you know what? But it's probably the cannabis use that's contributing towards the mental health and it's just a vicious cycle. You know, and, and throwing, getting into your car in the mix. It's, it's just a recipe for disaster. No, but you know what? I, <laughs> I say that I do still need some scientific proof, but I know, keep in mind, YouTube, where I am, marijuana is legal. I am in the United States of America. I lived in Chicago. It's legal for leisure and, and medical. I currently live in Miami, Dade County. Medical is legal. I know if I do that, I shouldn't drive. And I don't. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I ain't never, you know, done that and, and and drove because I don't like doing it in the first place. Y'all know what I'm talking about when I say doing it. I don't like doing it in the first place. I feel like I'm hula hooping with the ring from around Saturn. Like, I don't like it. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> so me, myself, I stay drug free because that's the way to be. Show me the box of your the young man could be facing a minimum one-year driving ban, an unlimited fine, and up to six months in prison. While he's checked in for a second blood test in a matter of hours, Mark and Rich are taking care of his girlfriend. She needs to get back to Huddersfield. Does she not have a license? So I'll just ask you if she... Does his girlfriend not have a license? ...could just sit in the car until he eventually comes out in a few hours. Well, no, because he'll just drive the car again. Yeah, well, this is it. So, so how long are they going to keep him in for? Eight, it should be eight hours, shouldn't it? But even then, you know, they're going to probably tell him not to drive, aren't they? Because mm. of what's just happened. I'll tell her then she needs to go and sit in the front counter. Right. Right, cool. But some people don't learn. So it's, well, it baffles me, no. absolutely baffles me. Silly man. Literally, oh. some people can do one little, little, like, one, legally, one little joint, 
and they be good, fully back functional, nothing wrong with them in an hour. Almost 20% of road deaths involve drivers with traces of drugs it, in I their system. It. And is the leading cause of deaths amongst the under 30s. He's they, prepared to drive. I feel like they're saying that like a, in a broader, like, a, like using that as very broad. That's a very broad statement. Like, I mean, specify which DRUGS are in the system. Don't just say drugs. Why don't I just spell it just to say the word again? This Casa. Drive 90 miles whilst intoxicated through drugs, whilst uninsured. Not only does it put him and his girlfriend at risk, but it puts everybody else at risk. There's no excuse for that. These drug drivers on the road do change lives. To them, they just see it as harmless, but we see what impact it does have, and we see that it's not harmless. The consumption of drinking drugs is certainly more prevalent with the younger driver. It's just absolutely not worth the risk. If you're gonna drink, if you're gonna do drugs, do not get behind the wheel of a car. It is as simple as that, because it- I agree. Get behind the screen of a computer and do reactions. It's the quickest way to get in some serious trouble. Quickest way to go fire. No, this is a serious matter. In this episode, quite a strong smell of cannabis coming from the vehicle. No either. further action was taken oh. against the young man in relation to aggravated vehicle taking. Bro took y'all on a race. Stole a car and nothing happened? Fella, get your cell phone, no! Step out, step out, taser! But he has been charged with no insurance, dangerous driving, fail to stop, possession oh, okay. of Class B drugs, and driving otherwise than in accordance with a license. Oh, come on. Let me just get in myself, let me get in myself. He's due to appear at Crown Court. After further inquiries, no action was taken against the young man in relation to his previous arrest for dangerous driving, criminal damage and arson. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. Uh, please, please. The young driver who crashed head-on into a 40-ton truck was found to be six times over the drug driving limit. Six? <laughs> it's kind of like yeah, business. yeah. At court, he... That boy was Wiz Khalifa, plus Snoop Dogg, plus anybody else. Received a one-year driving ban and fined £153. She said he's taking coke. An investigation into his previous arrest for drug offences is still ongoing. Lots of carnage. The HGV driver did not sustain any life-changing injuries and has fully recovered and is back to work. Take quite a while to clear up. Vehicles all over the road. After testing twice the legal limit for alcohol, the driver pursued by Julian Pearson was banned from the roads for 20 months. Get the keys. Yeah, there you go, a bunch of air going the way. Blood tests also confirmed he had been drug driving two nights earlier. He received a further 32 months disqualification and fines totaling £240. And that's it. That's it. The young man who failed a roadside drug test twice in the space of a few hours was handed a 12 month driving ban. Um, I had a smoke at about seven o'clock after work. No action was taken against him for uninsured driving. Don't drive twice in the same day. Oh, as he was able to produce an accepted certificate of insurance. Unbelievable, isn't it? That's embarrassing. Tell a little like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.